Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Bless you, Pastor Tolliver. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Let me see you right here. Oh, no. Oh, Pastor, we good. No, no, we good. No, we are excellent, brother. We are excellent. Shabbat Shalom, Professor Kobe. Shabbat Shalom. Let me show this out. Good. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, a, I'm extremely excited myself, sir. We all excited as well, man. Looking forward to it. Shabbat shalom, Pastor Vicky. Good to see you there. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Amen. Shabbat shalom. We're going to wait, but maybe, uh, amen. Maybe about three more minutes and give some a chance to come into come on to the service. Yeah, I'll reach out to different ones and tell them come on into the Shabbat service. Invite them to come on to the service. Reach out to different ones if you don't mind. Uh Shabbat Shalom, Rev C. Good to see you, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Rev C. Good to see you. Man, I appreciate you all coming to the Shabbat service. Amen. Thank God for the Sabbath. Amen. Praise the Lord. We wait for maybe another minute and then we'll. Go ahead and pray ourselves. Pray ourselves on in. I'm going to turn it maybe just a little bit like that there. Good to see you, Prophet Drew. Good to see you, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you. All right, let's pray. Father God, we bless you. We thank you for this. Erev Shabbat, it's Sabbath Eve, and Father God, we do come in the name above every name. Lord God, we come in Jesus' name, repenting, Lord God, of all our sins, gracious God. Gracious God, we repent of every known sin and every unknown sin of all unrighteous lord god we repent and we ask for forgiveness and we thank you lord for forgiveness lord god for we know lord god that you are a forgiving god we know lord god that you are a merciful god that you are a long-suffering god but father god in no way do we want to abuse your mercy in no way, Lord God, do we want to misuse your grace. But we do thank you and we bless you that we do have it and that it is a part of our salvation walk. And Father God, we do come, Lord God. Just thank you, Lord God, for another Sabbath day. Keep it to another week. And Father God, we pray, Lord God, is anybody watching tonight or watching the recording later? And if they have not accepted Yeshua, as their Lord and Savior. If they had not repented and accepted you, Yeshua, as their Savior, if that be you watching now or later, if you take your last breath right now, would you be eternally with the Messiah or will you be eternally separated from Messiah? you be eternally separated from Messiah if you have not accepted him as your Messiah as your Lord, as your Christ, as your Savior. 
and you will be eternally with him if you have done that. And someone may say, how do I know I've done that? Have you repented and asked him to save you, to come into your heart, mind, and soul? If you have not done that, and if you want your eternal state secure with him, then I would encourage you to repeat after me right now. Say, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I repent of all my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart, to come into my soul, to come into my mind. I repent of every known, unknown sin. And I ask you to save me. And I thank you for saving me. If you pray that prayer, your soul is right. Your prayer is right. Your soul is right. And now ask God to lead and guide you to a Bible teaching ministry. He will take you by the hand and cause you to grow in his will. Father God, we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray, Lord God, that in your holy land, more of the Jew, Lord God, that have not accepted Messiah would do so today. More of the Gentile who have not accepted Messiah would do so today. We pray, Lord God, that your kingdom will continue to grow. That your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is in the name of every name we ask this prayer. Yeshua Mashiach, we pray. Amen. Amen. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Here is the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Amen. Amen. Okay, it's okay. Rush long to everyone. Then that was um <clears throat> Pastor Cole Colin came in. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Cole. Revolutionary sword. That's in my email. Hmm. Well, I apologize, revolutionary sword, sword. Um I didn't know you had emailed me. <laughs> That's, I'm not trying to be funny, but I didn't know you had emailed me. Um, and honestly, I don't know who I'm talking to. But even if I don't know who I'm talking to, that don't mean I won't answer the email. I still answer the email, but I don't know. Um, just email me again. Is it going to be under this right here, Revolutionary Sword? Uh, email me tonight, and I will look at it. I will look at it. I will definitely look at it. And, and communicate with you. So I apologize for uh, missing that email. Um, but by all means, um, email me again. I may, I definitely make sure I look out for it. It's in the last week. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna say, my bad. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. How they say, charge it to my head and not to my heart. Revolutionary sword. I'm gonna definitely. Try to um, catch it next time so we can communicate and and go forward in things the most high. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for this Shabbat. Thank God for all of us that are coming in. Thank God for my wife. Um, thank God for community Beth Yeshua, the greatest community in the world. Thank God for all that are watching now. Bless you all. Shabbat Shalom. Well, we're going to we're going to talk a little bit tonight about a passage um, that comes out of Galatians. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about a passage or some verses in the book of Galatians. And y'all already know that we always um, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Sadibet, Shabbat Shalom, Hallelujah. Um, we always open the whole family is watching, and my three year old daughter. Yes, if you like, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, 
Tell your daughter, yes, I do like challah bread. Challah bread. Sound like, sound like Professor Kobe is bringing the, uh, uh, the Arab Shabbat in with his family. He may or may not be eating some at the time or just already ate some, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but um, but but um, for those that don't know what challah is, that's a that's bread. That that's challah bread is the bread that's traditionally ate um on um on Friday evening, the Rev Shabbat meal that we just had. See, there you go. See that 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 he just put it right there in the chat. So yeah, that's that's the bread. Now let me tell you, let. Me, before we get into the message tonight, let me just share a little bit about the culture uh, with uh, 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 Professor Colby mentioned here. Um, dining together is very important. Dining together is covenant. That's why it's important to break bread together because breaking bread together, that's a covenant uh function because you're breaking you're 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 cutting you're breaking bread um and it's um now like it like like at the temple after every service after every shabbat service after every shabbat service um um we go into our dining hall and we eat what's called oneg oneg it means delight it means delight so uh Oneg means delight. So we break bread together because it's a, it's a covenant, it's a, it's a form of covenant making or covenant binding. And also, it's um, where we glean from, remember Moses and they went up to the mountain, received the instructions from God, and they ate in his presence. They ate a meal in the presence of the Most High. So uh, uh, this is one reason why we eat Oneg together after the Shabbat message. We're going to back and break bread together, break, make covenant, continue covenant together and breaking a bread. And we eat it there together on the Shabbat um, uh, because God is still in the presence. Where two or three gather together in his midst, he's there. So we try to make sure that we do that. Um, of course, not legalistically, but that's one thing that we try to do um, um, at the temple. Uh, and you could do it uh, at your home. You got to do it at the temple, but it, it's very, it's a very important. So I, I, I like, I like what Professor Colby is doing with his family there. It's very, it's a very important. That's covenant binding right there. Um, so continue, continue to do that, Professor. All right. Um, now tonight, we're going to be coming out of the Book of Galatians. Book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse um, 13 and 14. So get your Bibles. Um, we're going to be coming out of um, the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Um Just to see if possible, we can have uh, maybe a little midrash, a midrash, a research, uh, a research. Um, and I'm a, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm a, I would invite you. I would invite you all to, um, if, you have, if you have any kind of lexicon, any kind of study aid, um, Pull it out, you know. Get your tape. Get, get, break it out right now. If you, if you're watching, if you sit on your bed, put it open on your bed. If you sit at the table, open at the table. Let's have a midrash, a midrash, on Galatians chapter one, verse thirteen through fourteen. Um, amen. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. And then I'm going to read. Um, I'm going to explain what I believe to be going on. And I'm going to read, um, I've got a couple sources here that I can read and glean from, but it's going to be, 
I do. Amen. That's good. Thank you, Reverend. Amen. Of course you do. He said, he said, of course you do, Reverend. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so we're going to, and let's just, um, even advancing within Judaism. Oh, okay. She put it, she put it in the verse. Okay. Let, let, she put it in the chat. Let's pass the Vicky put it in the chat. Okay. Let me turn here. Let me go here. Let's go to Galatians chapter. I don't need, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need this yet. Not just yet. Um, okay. Galatians chapter one. Let's get it. Galatians chapter one. Now, every so often you will hear me say something. Now, I don't take credit for um, going into this passage tonight. I don't take credit for that. Um, I'm not saying that this is something that the Lord uh, showed me or revealed to me. In all fairness, this is something that um, I would say, you know, names and stuff, but I don't want to say names without permission i want to say names so what i'm trying to say is i don't want somebody to think that you know that we going into the study here and talking about this address it like some like i got a revelation okay okay thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you helping me out sir and and, and i and, and i'm glad pastor Tolliver, that that's my brother right there I, I, that's, that's a third brother right there because you know we got to be we got to be humble y'all we got to be humble this is a humble walk um and i don't want to take credit for something that credit ain't due to me because <laughs> somebody will some people they uh, i'm getting to that but give credit to and all praise to the most high first of all and pastor tolliver because pastor tolliver um is the one who wanted us to um look into this this passage here galatians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 so i don't take no credit for this i don't it ain't something like you know the lord you know woke gave me in a dream gave me by word of prophecy and nothing like that um so all praise to god and god speaking to pastor Tolliver to have us to look into these passages here so let's look into them together galatians so thanks thank you again on um, pastor Tolliver. Let's look into Galatians chapter three. And y'all keep in mind, if you close to, if y'all close to Pastor Tolliver and down there in uh uh y'all oh, Jesus. South Carolina. Yeah, y'all, y'all know I'm horrible with names and, 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 and address. Uh we can be down there with Pastor Tolliver in April, fellowship with him, appreciation service and uh, uh fellowship service, all that good stuff with him. So we're excited about that. If you can if you can, McCormick, thank you, sir. If you can schedule yourself to be down there, he can even put the date in the chat. If you're anywhere close by, if you can schedule yourself to come on down there that weekend and fellowship or with him and celebrate with him, then put on your calendar. Put on your calendar. We're looking forward to it. Amen. Next month. Next month. All right. Here we go. Galatians chapter 1, verse 1. Y'all hear me every so often I will say something like um, April 28th, that's right, 3 p.m. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tolliver. April 28th, 3 p.m. Be in the place. You got a little time to plan on it still. Got a, it's a month out. Good time. Plan on it. Let's get there and fellowship with him and celebrate God with him. Um, you all hear me say every so often I'll say something like, you know, trying to understand the culture, understand the culture that they, what's going on in the culture, and it kind of, you know, kind of help sometimes to see what's going on in the passage and why what's being read or what's being written is being written to who, to the audience, to the audience who is being written to. So that's very important to him, you know, and, and, you know, proper, if I may say it like that, uh, I'm a whole, Y'all may have seen me. Uh, 
I know I'm looking for a book. Y'all may have seen me. Oh, here we go. Y'all may have seen me hold this book up a couple of times. Y'all may have seen me hold this up a couple of times. If you um amen. Yeah, if, if you can get this book, it'd be good have good to have um in your library. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. A prophet, prophet Drew, man, man. If, if, if you can make that man, man, it'd be good if you can make that man. Even if you on this side of the world still, I don't know where you located at. If you're on this side, we're still, you know, we can tag team together and roll out together. You know, we can always make stuff like that happen. Because Pastor, Pastor Tolliver, a thorough brother, man. I'd like y'all to meet, man. He, he's a thorough brother. You'll like him. All right. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Basically, you know, using good exegesis. You know, the exegesis is basically when you read the biblical text and you're going to pull out i'm gonna use my own word because I, I know i know we got professors and everybody here listening so you so gotta be careful how i word this stuff here got doctors and professors listening so um and they can that they, they can definitely correct me if i'm in error um you know use proper exegesis as best you can when that's when you read the biblical text and you pull out of the text basically exactly what the text is saying pulling out the text or gleaming from the text or extracting from the text exactly, basically, what the text or the verses are saying. That's exegesis. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Professor. No, you ain't at my feet. Uh, don't even try that. Uh, rather than eisegete, eisegeting the scripture is, you know, basically, you know, you... Uh, Yes, yes, uh, Pastor Cole. You going into the text or going to the scriptures already with a, a preconceived thought. A preconceived thought, meaning you go into the verse, you read the scriptures, and you put your thought in the verse. You put your idea in the verse. You put uh uh you put your your own commentary in the verse. I give you an example. I give you an example. Like, let's say, friends, you go into an Old Testament scripture. Thank you. Look at the address. 1948 uh, Liberty Hill Road. Amen. McCormick, South Carolina. Amen. Get that. Put that date down. Put that, look at that. The address down. You go into the scripture. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example that I ain't going to a particular verse. You go into the scripture. And let's say Old Testament, for example. And the scripture specifically, specifically says something pertaining to the priest. To the priest. The context and everything is dealing with the priest. The priest, the whole context is dealing with the priest. The even the instruction, the Torah, the instruction, the direction is there for the priest who's being talked about. Proper hermeneutics ask yourself these three questions. Ask yourself three questions. Who's talking? Who is he talking to? And what is he talking about? Key three questions that, that I know off the top of my head. Who's talking? Who is he talking to? And what is he talking about? Okay? Now, the verse there is talking directly in context to the priest or about the priest or concerning the priest. And you read it and Use some kind of way, squeeze in uh, 
a profit. Or you squeeze in um a regular uh or let me uh you squeeze in the king some kind of way you squeeze in somebody other than the priest who the verse is directly talking about because in your mind you thinking that okay this got to apply to everybody this way here it got to mean everybody this way here got to fit everybody so though it may say priest but i know that it's talking about everybody see that's you going into the verse straight up isogeting interpolate you you interpolate now 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 you go into the verse and you put your own spin on the verse because you are approaching it already with a complete with a preconceived thought in your mind that it gotta mean more than just the priest. It gotta mean more than literally. Now I ain't talking about spiritually. I ain't talking about spiritually. Cause now, cause now that's another whole subject right there. That's another whole subject. Literally, you and your mind gonna fit other ones in there outside of that scripture directly talking to the priest. That's isogeny. That's let me see. That, that. Okay, let me clean my glasses, Lord. Glasses for you on what? Okay. So, uh that 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 not a lot. I just discussed marriage with other couple like gifts and call. Ah, come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Ella. Come on, come on, come on. That's good. So now. So now, here we go. Now look at that Galatians. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now let's go with Let's go into Galatians. And I'm taking a long time already. And see if we can use some kind of proper exegesis. Hermeneutics here. Galatians chapter 3, 1, rather. Paul, an apostle. Do we know what's talking about Paul? And he's writing to the Galatians in Galatia, to the Galatians. We know that the Galatians congregation community is a mixed community, a mixed community of uh, Gentile believers, a mixed community of uh, Jewish believers, a mixed community, it's safe to say, even some proselytes that's a part of this community. Okay, proselyte mean they once was uh Gentile, but they but now they are uh Jewish now, they're Israelite now because they proselyted. Okay, of course, you got God fearers in this community. Okay, you got God fearers in the community. Um, now God fearers would be um uh, a non Israelite who uh, well, you had God fearers present during biblical days, even before Christ came. That was a non-Israelite who was in right standing with God. Who was in right standing with God, meaning they were saved folk, and but he didn't proselyte. He didn't fully convert. Okay. He basically kept what we learned or, or was told. You know, see it's in scripture. We was told, uh, yes, right, no circumcision, right. The God fear was not circumcised, right, Pastor uh, uh Pastor He was not circumcised. Now, the God fear will be one. That basically what we believe would have kept what's called the Noachai command. Now you're not gonna see, you're not gonna see in the scripture no list called the Noachai command or no or the commands given to Noah. We hear the word Noachai, Noachai. That's talking about the commands given to Noah. Basically, when, when Noah came out of the ark, he received a set of instructions, a set of a Torah instructions, because Torah just means instructions, mean direction. Um, that would have been for him. And all non-Israelites, because at the time they came out of the ark, Israel was not around. At the time they came out of the ark, won't no Jew walking around. At the time they came out of the ark, 
truth be told, some somebody gonna like this. I know some of the Hebrews ain't like won't know Hebrews walking around. When they came out of the ark, there was no Jew, there was no Israelite, and there was no Hebrews. Oh, yes, I said that. Oh, some people ain't gonna like that right there. Oh, they ain't gonna like that right there. But they were not Jewish. They were not Hebrews. They were not Israelites, and they were not Hebrews when they came out of the ark. But when they came out of that ark, God gave this group of people a set of instructions that would follow them from here, from that time until they died. And long they kept those instructions with their faith in God, because they can keep those instructions and, and still not have faith in God, and when they die, it ain't do them good. Ain't doing a good cause, cause no, no command never saves you. No instruction never saves you. It's only your faith and trust in God that saves. Only God's grace. I'm gonna tell you what saves. God's can they see me? Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, Rev C. Amen. Good. That, 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 that's that's excellent. That's good, Rev C. Excellent. Um uh so uh salvation has always been by God's grace. And faith to believe in God, not by no works. Even from Adam's time to Noah's time, not by no works, not by no law. It's been by God's grace and faith to believe in God. God gave man instructions, not to save him, but to teach us how to live for him. To teach us what pleases and what don't please him. I mean, that's, that's what it is, not the Savior. So even... Noah, he had instructions. He had instructions. He couldn't just come out the ark and live and do what he want to do. I mean, that'd be chaos. That'd be a world of chaos. That'd be a world of chaos if there's no instructions. So they, they, that's what you call the Noah commands. And those would have followed non-Israelites until Jesus came, you know what I'm saying? And, and even today. They still are here today for non-Israelites. You know what I'm saying? But most important of all, somebody having Christ observing those. So Noah had a Torah. No, 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 no. Noah didn't have a Torah. Now, now that's a good question. Watch this now. That's a good question. I love that question. And we're gonna we gonna get in this. Watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if we can show you something right there. Okay. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Let's look at okay. Y'all see that question? So Noah had a Torah as well. Now watch this. Noah didn't have the instructions that Moses. Yes, that's right, Professor Kobe. Absolutely. Noah did not have. And now I know some people try to push the uh, Torah. I mean, I say Torah. I'm talking about the instructions that Moses received. Now you ain't, you're not gonna get me to believe because I don't see it. You're not gonna get me. Uh, you're not gonna get me to believe that Adam had this had the same set of instructions that Moses received and had. I know some people believe that. I'm not. I don't believe that because I can't prove that. I don't see that. But that doesn't mean that Adam didn't have Torah. That don't mean Adam didn't have Torah. Adam had Torah because Torah means instructions, period. It means direction, period, period. So so, so, we, so, when we, so when we hear the word Torah, don't think about just, I'm not saying Pat Tolliver doing this, but when you, think, when you hear the word Torah, don't just think Mount Sinai. Don't think about commandments being given to Moses. No. Why? Because instructions was even before. I don't see that either. I can't figure out a different setup. That's good, Pastor Tolliver. There you go. Absolutely. Now watch this. Here we go. Here we go. And we're going to get into Galatians. We're going to get in there. Okay. Let's do this. Watch this. Okay. Let me see something. Hmm.
Hold on, I'm looking for something here. One day, one day, one day, I'm going. Hey Amen. No, 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 don't be quiet. Um, it is good. It's good. One day I'm going to, I have, I have a teaching and I have it on PowerPoint too. One day I'm going to try to do it up here. Um, learn how to do that up here. I have a te teaching on PowerPoint that teaches on what, what a Torah is. What a command, which a mitzvah is, or what a Torah is, or what a law is, rather, because that's what a law is, what a command is, what a statue is, what an ordinance is, what a judgment is, because these are different words that have different Hebrew meanings. So it's important to know what those Hebrew meanings, because we see those words all the time in the Bible. We see the word law, we see the word statue, we see the word uh, ordinance. We see the word uh, 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 decree. We see the word judgment. We see these words in the Bible. And it would be a good idea to look at the look at what these words mean because some of the meaning is going to overlap, but it's going to be something slightly different about all of them. Why? Because they're different Hebrew words. So it got to be something slightly different about all of them, even though some of the meaning may overlap, but something gonna stand out different between all of them because they're not the same Hebrew word, and it's very important. Like this very subject right here. Okay, this very okay. I give you an example right now. I give you an example right now. I give you an example right now. A Torah. Hold on, let me see. Let me, let me see what he's saying. There. I was confused with this one until now. I think you said Genesis. Uh, very clean beast that I shall take thee by seven and male. Okay, yeah. Now see, now see. That right there is a Torah. That's an instruction. Now, okay, here we go. And one and one, and one day. Yes, that was an instruction. There you go. That was an instruction. They're being told something to do. That ain't got nothing to do with Moses. That ain't got nothing to do with Moses. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with Mount Sinai. They're being given a set of instructions to do, to carry out. Nothing to do with Moses. Nothing to do with the Mount Sinai going to get the mountain, going to the mountain. None of that. None of that. That's an instruction right there. And I'm and I'm, I'm gonna look at something. I'm, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull some out in a minute too, along with that. Along not with not with the Noah part. Um, but um, but here we go. And like I said, I'm, I'm gonna. I got this on power. I'm gonna do a teaching on it. Okay, there we go. Excellent question. He would know what was clean and unclean because God told him. You know, God would have told Adam. It would have been passed on and passed on and passed on for whatever reason God wants to do it. Now that's where the now that's where the jury is out trying to figure out if someone want to figure out why God gave it like that. To me, I'm not even gonna try to wrap my brain my brain around that because that's gonna be kind of hard to try to prove why God gave it like He gave it. I can't prove why God gave it like he gave it. But what I can say is I know they would have known that because God would have had to tell them and they passed it on to the next generation, generation, generation whatever meaning or why, that between them and the Lord. But that was still an, a Torah. Why? Because it was an instruction that had nothing to do with Mount Sinai. It had nothing to do with Moses. It had nothing to do with, it had to do with Israelites. <laughs> That instruction right there is it going is it going around? But now I'm gonna look at something else. I'm, I'm gonna pull out y'all got me rolling, but I'm gonna pull out a, a, a example to, to show what I'm saying. Hey, I forgot what I'm gonna do. Lord Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. 
Hey, y'all know I get to I get to talking. Okay, there. Mm, mm, mm. I forgot what I was gonna say. We gonna get the galaxies, y'all. We are gonna get the galaxies. Okay, but now I do I do want to pull out. Oh yeah, I, I know I know I'm about to say. This what I'm about to say. Okay. A Torah, a Torah, now this is my understanding, okay, follow me now, a Torah, or in, okay, <laughs> amen, well, well, whatever y'all want to do, I'm cool, a Torah, or instruction, I'm going to just stick with the word Torah, Okay. A Torah is something that is written. So a Torah, when you open your Bible, when you see something in the Bible, old new, that's written, of course it's in the Bible, it's written, and it's telling you something or giving you a direction or giving you a, 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 a direction or, or give you an instruction. That's a Torah because it's something written. Key. Torah is something written that you can read. Something written that you can read. Torah is something you can read. Like, like we just sat there and read where God told them to, to uh, take this clean and that clean. That's written. Now, Torah. Now, a mitzvah, which a command. Now, there's another word. There's another Hebrew word. Because see, under the word law, you may see the word Torah. Sometimes, if you look at the Hebrew word, like if you go to the Old Testament, you look up the, you look see the word law, L-A-W, and you look at the Hebrew behind that, you may see the word Torah, okay? A Torah is, or instruction, or direction that you, that you are reading. That you can literally read that and see that in your Bible way before Moses, after Moses, wherever. That's Torah. Now, that's written. Okay? Now, a command or a mitzvah, watch how I word this. This is my understanding. Now, I could be wrong. This is my understanding. All Torahs are mitzvahs. But not all mitzvahs Torah. Now I know that's gonna sound interesting right there. Now, and I'm gonna break it down in a minute. Now this is my understanding. I could be wrong from what I've looked into. Okay. Now Professor Golden puts. I gotta read that now. Y'all, y'all got me wild. Jewish legend has it that the Torah was only the Ten Commandments, and rejected by the other nation was the Torah. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, 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 commandment. Okay, now, okay, uh, commandment, laws, and statutes. Torah. Okay, here we go. Good. Here we go. Commandments. Watch this. Commandments, Prophet Jew. Commandments are Torah if you open your scriptures and you can read it. Com well, watch, I'm, I'm gonna break it down. Commandments are Torah. This is my commentary, y'all. My understanding today, and it may change tomorrow. Okay, okay. Commandments are Torah. That when you open your Bible, you can read it. That's why I say all. Torah are commandments, but not all commandments or mitzvahs, because that's, 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 that's the Hebrew word, mitzvah. Not all mitzvah are Torah. Let me tell you, let me tell you why I say that. Here we go. Okay. God can give you a mitzvah or a command. Hear me clearly, family, that you might not see in the Bible. Ah, 
God can give you a mitzvah. Do Torah must be read. Yes, that's my understanding, Pastor. Yes. See, watch it. I know y'all a couple of seconds behind me. Watch, watch what I'm about to say. Okay. God can give you a command, which the Hebrew word for one of the Hebrew words for command is mitzvah. Okay. Mitzvah. That's why in our culture, you will hear some Jewish, it's like people say, good mitzvah. Good mitzvah. That thing that person doing right there. You may not find it in the Bible. See what I'm saying? So, so God can give you a rhema word. God can give you a rhema word in your ear or in your head or in your in your soul this round. A rhema, rhema me spoken, y'all know that, right? A spoken word to tip, giving you some kind of instruction, give you some kind of instruction that you ain't going to find in the Bible. That's still a command from God. That's still a mitzvah. Oh. All Torah are command. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's good. That's good. See? So, 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 okay. Let's say, for instance, if God gives you or anybody in here a rhema, meaning spoken, spoken, audible word, spoken. You ain't got necessarily heard like you hear my boys. You know what I'm saying? It may it be it be in your Noah, like they say you, in your soul is around. God done told you to do something. God gave, okay, here we go. God can tell you, God will give you instruction. I'm gonna give you an example. God, good, good TJ Jack. Shabbat Shalom. God may give you an instruction. Okay, here we go. Let's say, for instance, if you pull up in front of 7 Eleven, okay, pull up for 7 Eleven, okay, and you see somebody on the curb, you know, need some help. And you about to walk past, walk by. And, and I'm not saying do or don't. I'm, I'm trying to give an example. And you know that God, for some, you, you just got the Im, Im, impression on you. You, you. you just got this uh, 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 knowing in your soul, this realm, that God is telling you to go and give something to that person. Go give that person $5. Okay? You're not going to find in the Bible where it says, Give somebody five dollars. If you open the Bible where it says give somebody five dollars, now you're reading a command that is a Torah. Come on, you're reading a command, a mitzvah that is a Torah because you can find it in the Bible. But what so what but what do you call when God tells you something to do and you can't find it in the Bible? Because God do tell you something to do. That's the instruction, like what I just gave. God, that's still a that's still a, that's still a mitzvah or an instruction from God, but you cannot find it in the Bible. But it's still something God tell you to do. I pray this makes sense. I pray this makes sense. It's still God could be telling you to go over there and apologize because you know you told you said something wrong. Go over there and and and. and Go, go over there and apologize because you know you shouldn't have said that to that person like that. You're not going to find the way you worded that thing to that person in the Bible. Unless it, unless you worded it like that, whatever you did. But God would tell you, go make that right. Because you sat there and told this person such and such. Now go make that right. And now go treat that person out to dinner or something like that or whatever to make that right. Or do such something to make you may not find that written like that directly in the Bible, but it's still an instruction from God that falls under a mitzvah. Now, the one that you find directly in the Bible, written on paper, that's a mitzvah, that's a Torah. Oh my God. Am I happy? But hold on, what's what J Jack saying? But it won't it won't go against the written word. In your example, it might not say give homes five dollars, but it does say be. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now, 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 Jay Jackson's right. Now, what, what she's saying there is that mitzvah or that command, it ain't gonna go against the written word of God. Oh no. It ain't gonna go against the written word of God. No, it ain't gonna do that. 
It's not going to go against the written word of God, but you may not see it written like that. Type of one, you understand what I'm trying to say. Type of one, one you understand what I'm trying to say. You may not see, you may not see it written. Okay, here we go. This way you get into one example, you get into like the spiritual manifestation. Like we believe in Corinthians, I think it's Corinthians. They're like what nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit believe in? A word of wisdom, a word not, a word not. See now, don't you know that sometimes that word of wisdom that God was speaking to your into your head, into your to your mind, or to your thoughts, that word of wisdom, you may not find that. You may not find in, 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 in the Bible written word like that. But God can be giving it to you for you still to carry it out. That's a mitzvah. That's still an instruction. But that's a mitzvah that you can't find worded like that. Now, now you may find a scripture. You may find a scripture that you can glean, you know, and use it as a, a scripture supporting that, 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 that thought. But it's not worded just like that. What I'm trying to say is this. God will tell you and can tell you to do some things that you're not going to be, you're not going to see necessarily worded just like that in the scripture. So do we not do it? Yes, we do it. Especially when you know it's God speaking. And that's another whole side to make sure we know we're hearing the voice of God. But, but, but all I'm trying to say is when you're talking about a Torah, an instruction, that's what I believe you can open your Bible and see written. So a Torah is a written command. A mitzvah is could be a myth, a mitzvah could, could be a man, could be a command that's written or not written. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, like the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are mitzvah that are Torah because they're written. I pray that makes sense. I pray that makes sense. I pray that I'm gonna say it again. The Ten Commandments are mitzvahs that are Torah. Type of two, that makes sense. When, when I say, when I say that I'm like, man, y'all, you know I'm trying to read the chat. I, I gotta start reading the chat. Y'all know I'm like when Shaw said overseer. Yes, come on. That exactly. Exactly, exactly, COVID. Exactly, good. That's a good example. Yes. So, so here we go. So, well, Alexa, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I, I got, I got this on a teaching. I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because God can give you a word of wisdom. God can give you a word of knowledge. God can give you. A word of prophecy. Watch this, family. God can give you a word of wisdom. God can give you a word of knowledge. God can give you a word of, uh, of, uh, 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 of wisdom, prophecy. And it it be he be telling you to do something or say something or give whatever, and you may not find it in the Bible. Ah, come on now. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now, now I'm uh, okay. I'm gonna take Pastor Tolliver example here. Okay. Torah, husband, love your wife. Now here we go. Now, husband, love your wife. Get this now. Husband, love your wife. That right there is a mitzvah and a Torah. Why? Because you can see it written in the Bible, love your wife. That's a mitzvah and a Torah. But now, let's say, for instance, the part where it says, and treat them like queens. That will fall under a mitzvah because you're not going to see directly in the scripture where it says, treat them like queens. <laughs> I pray, type of, type, type of two of that makes sense. I know I got two all over. So the, a Torah is like Pastor Tolliver said. God said, love your wives. That's a that's a command that is a Torah. That's a command that is a Torah. I'll make sure it's clear. That's a command that is a Torah. Why is it a Torah? Because it is something you can open your Bible and see written. 
Now, a good command that might not be a Torah is God tell you to take your wife uh, some 12 roses tomorrow. You don't see that in the Bible. You don't see that in the, you don't see that in the Bible say take your wife 12 roses tomorrow. I ain't talking to you, Pastor Tyler. I'm just talking about general. You don't see that in the Bible, but God told you that. That I'm not I'm not saying telling you that right now, but that could be something that God would tell you to do, but you don't see that in the Bible. That's still a mitzvah, it's still a command and instruction from God, but you don't see you can't, I wouldn't call it a Torah because you don't see that directly in the scripture. Now, I will call it a Torah if you want to just use the word instruction that God giving you. That's fine. But for the Torah that's written, you can find that in the scripture like that. That's why I link that to the, that I link that to, to being a command and instruction. I try to zero in on Torah being instructions that you can definitely find in the Bible written down. Okay. But now, here, here we go. Now, whoo, go on, boy, it's 827. Now, let's look at something real quick. Yes, yes, good command. Yes, hold on. No, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the roses. Yeah, it was a good command. Okay, yes, absolutely. Now, now, now let, let me give this example here. Let's go to um. Okay, let's do this. My wife is watching. She about to come over and ask, ask why guy. <laughs> Ah, that's funny. <laughs> Go, hey. <laughs> that's why I ask him. That's why I put him on the hot seat. Need to pop the shade to our eyes. Torah increase. Increase as sin increase. I'm trying to follow that question. I'm trying to follow. I'm trying to trying to follow. I'm trying to follow the way that's worded. I apologize. I'm trying to follow the way you the way you wording that. Hold on. I'm trying to follow that. Follow Peach. Go get the word. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Pastor Big said, "Go get." Hey, Professor Kobe, go get the roses, man. Go get the. I'm trying to follow your question, but hold on. Hold on. Now, now let's do something real quick. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, let's do something quick. Let's do move. Okay, let's do something. Good to see you. Shabbat Shalom, uh, Philippe. Let's do something quick. Okay. Now, let's let's uh hold on. Okay, here we go. Let's do this very quick. Let let do let let do this let do this little short midrash very quick. I want somebody to put in the chat. Somebody put in the chat. Okay, in this book, in this book right here, you're gonna find. In this book right here, you're gonna find what's called first mention principle. First mentioned principle. And I'm just going to tell you my own definition. Not my own made-up definition, but first mentioned principle basically means uh, finding where a word or verse or phrase or word or a couple words and phrase, whatever, is mentioned first in the Bible. And this ain't the absolute, this ain't an absolute rule, what I'm about to say. This is not an absolute rule. Liberty Matt Willis. So uh Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, uh Brother Willis. This is not an absolute or concrete rule, but it's definitely a good rule to kind of guide yourself. Meaning, first mention principle for the most part is when something is mentioned the first time, whether it be a word or a phrase, not absolutely in every case, but a good majority of the time 
it's going to carry that meaning or that understanding throughout the rest of the Bible. That don't mean it's absolute every case and every time. But for the most part, it's going to carry that understanding throughout the rest of the Bible. That was you call. Oh, good, 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 Rev C. Good, good, Rev C. The law of first mention uh, created that to understand it. We must find the. Come on, come on, Professor Cover. He put it right there. Scripture, that word of doctrine revealed and studied that. Come on, that see, that's good. I love that. That's good. Thank you, Professor Covey. And Rev C said you got the book too. So now, so now I want somebody to put in the chat the first place in the Bible where we see Torah. Torah. Now I said Torah. I said Torah. That's a Hebrew word though. And I said that for a reason. <laughs> I said that for a reason. Okay, good. Chapter 7. Yeah, good. Okay, now, Genesis what, though? Genesis what? Here we go. Ah, right, there you go. Genesis 26 and 5. Okay, now, let's read this passage. Genesis 26 and 5. Let's read it. Here we go. Now, watch this word in here. Now, now, let me let me let me read verse. Uh, uh, oh, amen. Okay, okay, good, Professor Kobe. Excellent. I got to remember that now. Now, let's read from verse one to five to get a little bit of context here. So we can read from verse one to five to get a little bit of context. It says, "And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham." So we know we so we know that we talk about Abraham here. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Now see, watch this. Watch this. See this? Watch this. And God appeared unto him and said, Go not down. See, that right there, see, that's an instruction. That's a Torah. He's get, he's giving some instruction. He's giving some instruction. He said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Verse 3. So journey in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries. And I would love to go into the verse, but for a second time, we got to move on. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Verse 4. Okay. And it says, and I will make thy seed to multiply at the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Okay. This is the verse I want to get to right here. Because, here we go, that Abraham obeyed. Abraham ain't no Israelite. Abraham ain't no Jew. Now, Abraham is called the first Hebrew, but he's not no Israelite. He's not no Jew. It's long for Moses. Watch this now. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. That's key. That's key, y'all. And kept my charge. Oh. That's key, y'all. My commandments. See that? What that Hebrew word there? What that Hebrew word there for commandments? Oh, it's mitzvah. My statutes, kocha or koch. That's a Hebrew word. That's a different Hebrew word. And my laws. Oh, Torah. You have. You have commandments, which is mitzvah. You have statutes, which are kucha, parent root koch, and my laws. You got three different English words that have three different Hebrew words. Now, like I said earlier, 
There's going to be something that's going to slightly be the same with all three, but there's going to be something that's slightly different with all three. Why? Because they're three different Hebrew words. So they're going to occur three slightly different etymologies. Even though some of the definition might be similar, but it's going to be something that's going to stand out different between the three of them because they're not the same word. Type of one that makes sense so far. And I'm going to explain. Type of one that makes sense. I want you to make sure y'all follow me. Since there are three Hebrew words, there got to be something slightly different about the three because they're three different words. Okay? Now, Keep in mind, thank, thank y'all, thank you very much. Keep in mind what I said a few minutes ago. Let's think, let's take about commandments. The Hebrew word there is mitzvah. Okay. Oh, uh, look at shout out to Adam Berea. Berea, Berea, Berea. Berea, I ain't mess with you, Berea. Berea, I ain't mess. I ain't mess with you, Berea. You know what I'm talking about too, man. You, Berean, I'm saying that's my that's my brother though. Shout out to Berean. Um, Shabbat Shalom, Berean. You know how he put laugh or laugh. I know he laughed. Berean, Berean, that my that my but that my brother there. But Berean, Berean, a piece of work, y'all. Berean, that my brother. But that Berean right there. Y'all see that guy right there? Berean, something else. That my brother though. Y'all got love on Berean. But here we go. So now, so so we know that it gotta be uh something slightly different because they're three different Hebrew words. Now, keep in mind what I said earlier about uh, commandments, statutes, and laws. Moses ain't around. So don't even think about Sinai. Don't think about Sinai. Uh -uh. Abraham ain't, ain't no Israelite. Abraham ain't no Jew. Huh. But it says that he will keep my commandments, Mitzvah, and my statute and my laws. Come on now, get this family. Here we go. Let me break it down. Like I said earlier, if God told Abraham. If God told Abraham something by a rhema word, and he did, a spoken word to him, mitzvah, Abraham would do it. Abraham would obey that instruction. Mitzvah. If God told Abraham something to do, whether he spoke it directly in his thoughts, whether God used another human being to speak it to Abraham, whether watch what watch it now, whether God used another human being to tell Abraham, or whether Abraham heard it within his soul this round from God, or by angel, or by whatever, or by donkey, or, or ass, or whatever, God is saying, Abraham will do it. My mitzvah. That's commandment. Statue. Now, watch this. Statue is this. And I can break down the Hebrew for the, for the sake of time. I ain't going to do it now. Now, statue is, watch this. Now, statue is a mitzvah. And statue can be a Torah. Okay? Statue is a mitzvah. And statue can be a Torah. Here we go. So, when it said, Abraham, keep my statue. Okay, if you look into the etymology of the word statue, and I could do it at another time, basically the statue is going to, uh, because see, you look at the definition of the commandment, you're going to see a, a slight resemblance of the definition of statue. Look at it, you look at the definition, you're going to see some slightly res resembling each other, but something is going to be slightly different from a statue and a commandment. Here we go. I ain't, I can't try to read, I can't try to read the chat, y'all. I ain't even gonna try to read chat. I'm, I'm gonna hang already right here. I, I, if I try to read that chat, I ain't, I, I'm, I'm gonna get lost. Here we go. So, a statue, basically, the way I've come to look at it, one way, is if God 
told Abraham to leave, watch my word, watch how word is, to leave this place and go to that place. Watch how word is. And I can show you this in the Hebrew, maybe another time. Now, this commandment, this commandment here, or misfor, watch how word is. This, this misfor here is requiring Abraham not just to uh, obey God, but it may be required Abraham to move from this place to that place or to go and assemble over there at a certain time to worship or go and offer, leave here and go offer up some over there or be at a certain place at a certain time. Meaning he leave this spot and go and travel to be at that spot. Now, the actual moving from there to there is a stat, it falls under a statue. That which was separated came together. I can I gotta show you in the Hebrew, but right now, so now it not only is he being told an instruction, but now this particular instruction is requiring him to go and be somewhere or assemble somewhere. I pray this makes sense. See, not all the instructions require you uh, to assemble somewhere. Not all them, like, okay, like, like, like the Shabbat. Here we go. Like the Shabbat, the Sabbath. The Sabbath the Sabbath is a mitzvah, is a Torah, and it's a statue. Uh-oh. Watch this, y'all. The Sabbath. Now, this is for Israel. Now, let, here we go. Using hermeneutics. Here we go. Hermeneutics. Because it was Israel that was commanded to keep the Sabbath. Okay? So, using proper hermeneutics. Now, the Sabbath falls under a mitzvah. It falls under a Torah. And it falls under a statue. Watch this now. Watch how, watch how I break this down. The Sabbath falls under a mitzvah, a Torah, and a statue. Why? Here we go. This is why. It's a mitzvah because it's something that God is commanding Israel. It's something that God is telling Israel. It's a Torah because you can see this commandment written down in the Bible. You can see this commandment written down in the Bible. So Israel is being told something, mitzvah, that can be found, Torah, and it requires you or it asks of you or you're being instructed to leave your home and assemble somewhere. That's the statue. Oh, my God. I pray y'all getting this. That's the statue part of it. You are being told or instructed or directed because that is a mikra. A mikra is a convocation. You look in the Hebrew, Leviticus chapter 23, uh, the Sabbath is a mikra, a convocation. Mikra means assembling, assembling together. You leave this place. See, that's why, here we go. That's why Jesus, Jesus went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Why did he do that? Because it was a commandment, meaning God gave it. It was a Torah because it could be found in the Bible and it was a statue because it required him to leave his home and go assemble somewhere. And the place that was chosen to assemble that was the synagogue to keep that Torah. I pray that makes sense. God, I pray that makes sense. I pray that makes sense. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that makes sense. Type of three, if that makes sense. Type of three. <laughs> Type of three, if that makes sense. That you're sure, I mean, you just sure, kept the three things. He kept the mitzvah. God told him, instructed him. Torah, because he saw it written. 
And that particular Torah, that particular, that particular, he said one, two, and three. <laughs> that particular mitzvah was something, or Torah was something that was requiring him to leave his place of dwelling and go assemble, assemble together. That's the statue. That's the statue. So we talk about Abraham. God, just like God told Abraham, see, watch the statue. God told Abraham to leave where? So many things are. Yes. Yes, Pastor Tolliver. Yes, sir. Yes. I will have to agree with that. Yes, sir. Yes, Pastor Tolliver. Yes. So, so we see Abraham. Watch this statue that Abraham did. Remember, Abraham was told to leave for his father's land, right? To leave and go somewhere else. See, that's the statue. He not only obeyed God, but that instruction told him to move. Does that make sense, y'all? Now, let's say, for instance, if Abraham had during his time something written down. And I ain't talking about what Moses got. Um, amen, 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 amen. I know y'all, it's 847. It's 847. It's 847. Wow, it's 847. Wow. Amen, amen. Wow, we didn't get to it, did we? Well, it's 847, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Well, so this way we have Abraham. We have Abraham. Cool. Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, I know, man. Y'all, now, now I need some help, y'all. I need some help, y'all. Uh, uh, do, do, do we believe? Do we believe that this is? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna pull on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull on y'all tonight. Do we believe that this was the direction that the Lord wants to go tonight, and not with Galatians? And I and I I'm, I'm, I'm definitely for um, Pastor uh, Daryl respond because it was him who. Okay, thank you, Pastor Cody. Uh, Pastor Darrell, do, do, do you believe that this was the direction? <laughs> amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Amen. 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 Hey, praise God. Praise God. Well, prayer. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. But well, hallelujah. Well, I'm glad. Wow. Hey, but see, that's see, see, that's a perfect example. See. That's why we can't put God in the box. We can't put God in the box. We can't put God in the box. That's why it's, that's why it's good to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, you could be thinking we're going, which I ain't going to lie, I thought we were going at Galatian. I ain't going to lie. Can't ready to prepare for it. Come on, that's it. That's it, Pastor Colin. Perfect example. God, God will take it in the direction where he wanted to go. Now, that's not to say that, that Pastor Tolliver won't hear from God. No, I know he will hear from God. I know he will hear from God with, 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 with that question. With that question. And I'm just gonna throw this little nugget out here. I'm gonna throw it. Uh we're gonna lease uh, it was kind of what. Well, what, I'll tell you what we'll do. What we'll do for we gonna, for, la, for the last 10 minutes, I'm just going to go to Galatians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, and we're going to read it, and I'm just going to uh, share a little bit, and we'll be out of here at 10 o'clock. Type of 1, that good with everybody. Type of 1, if that works for everybody. We're going to go to Galatians chapter uh, 1, 13 to 14, and I'm just going to share a little bit about it within 10 minutes, and we're going to get off. And then we can come back next week and address. Let's come back next week and address. Okay? Everybody down with that? 
So next week we're gonna come back and we're gonna address on Galatians um 1, 13, um and 14. Um, but I'm just gonna read it tonight and give uh my brief understanding, and then we go and look into it and come back next week. Let's go ahead, let's go there. Because this was good. Amen. All right, let me see what we got. Uh Galatians. Okay, I'm gonna see. Got nine minutes. I'm gonna try to comply here. Galatians chapter one. Okay, 13, 14. For ye have heard, ah, for ye have heard of my conversation. That word conversation, this that's a translation here. The word conversation could be easy to translate as life, behavior. Okay. Life behavior, way of doing things, okay? For we have heard, for ye have heard, tell me the, Gal the, the Galatians, make the multitude here. Have you heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion? How that beyond measure I persecute the church of God, he said, persecute, persecute church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many, my equal in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my father. I'm going to read them again, and I'm going to explain the next couple of minutes. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past. That word conversation just means life, behavior, where I carry things out. In the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure, how that, this is key, how that beyond measure I persecuted, that's very key, the church of God. The church of God be Gentile believers and Jewish believers of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many, my equal, his own age, in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my father. So basically what that's saying there is this. Before Paul came to faith in Jesus Christ, he was of the most strictest sect of Jews and still was uh, the Pharisees. Uh, 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 and you may see, uh, like, in the, if, you, if you look at the book of Maccabees, you'll see the Hasidims. The there was a Zeus group, and we believe that the that the Pharisees came out of this Hasidim group. Okay, so now these were people, Israelite, a certain sect. You, you had different sects of Jews. You had Pharisees. Sadducees, Ebonites, um, uh, 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 Essenes, Essenes, Ebonites, Pharisees, Sadducees, um, and a couple more sects of Jews. Okay, now Paul was of the Pharisee sect, and this was the most strictest, this was the most learned, the most um, uh, scholarly of all of them. Okay, now. He, before he came to Christ, was one that of the of this of the Pharisaic group that was zealous for uh, the Torah, that was zealous for the uh, the sayings of the fathers or the teachings of the fathers, which were the Mishnah, that was zealous for the things of God. He was a part of this strict sect of Jews that was zealous for the things of God by any means necessary. So he felt as though that he was protecting the things of God, protect, protecting God's Torah, God's will, by persecuting the church, by uh, attacking the church, because at that time he did not put have faith in, in, in Jesus Christ. At that time, he didn't have put his faith in his trust in Jesus Christ. He was attacking the church of God. And the church of God was a mixture of Israelites and non-Israelite believers. He was attacking them, but thought he was doing right. So his, so his religious duty, his religious uh, passion, being a Pharisee of the strictest group that was part of this zealous group that was going, going in hard, for the things of God. And part of that was 
them attacking the believers in Jesus Christ. So his religious observance at that time, at that time before um, Jesus was one of the Pharisees of that, he, he remained a Pharisee. He remained a Pharisee, but he did not remain one of those Pharisees that religious observance was attacking Christianity. His religious observance was not uh, coming against uh, the believer in Jesus Christ. His religious observance before Jesus came as a Pharisee of that strict set was one that did that to the believers. So, so when it says, so when it says there, when it says there, I'm gonna say it again. When it says there, uh, for you, for ye have heard of my conversation, me life of behavior in time past in the Jews religion, in the Pharisee, in the Pharisee, zealous, uh, combative Jewish part. Remember, you had different sects of Jews. Everybody won't doing and carry things out like all the other Jews. All the Jews didn't always agree on everything. All the Jews didn't always, you know, be down together with everything. No. You got different sects, different ones that agree not always the same way. But Paul was of this one that was zealous. They were learned guys, smart guys. They were zealous, and they would go in on any Gentile or any Jew or anybody. It, it's like the Maccabees. The Maccabees, you know, they fought against uh, Antiochus Epiphanes and, you know, and, 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 and the pagans and so forth. The, they, were, they were the Hasidim. The Maccabees were the Hasidim. They were the Zealous group that fought for the things of God. Paul was was kind of, was, was on the track like them guys, but he came years later. He was on the track like them guys um, against the church because he felt like the church, because they had faith in Jesus Christ, was coming against the gospel, I mean, coming against God. So his religious practice amongst those zealous Pharisees that didn't believe, his religious practice was to go against the believers in Jesus Christ, whether it be Jew or Gentile, beat them up, take them out. That was his religious practice in time past. But now his religious practice, he still has religious practice, but not like that no more. I pray that makes sense. He still has religious practice, but not like that no more. Now his religious practice is following Jesus Christ as a believer. But before, his religious practice was of that group that was attacking the church and holding to the sands of the Father, which would be the Mishnah, you know, it would have been called Mishnah later on, okay? So so this is the point. His I got one minute. So his religious practice before coming into Christ was, was connected with this Pharisaic way, but he remained a Pharisee, but he didn't remain a Pharisee with that style of religious practice like he had before Christ. I'm going to say it again. He remained a Pharisee, but he did not remain a Pharisee with the same religious practice that he had before he came in Christ. He changed his religious practice, and now he still kept um, his Pharisee uh, position, and now his religious practice was following Jesus Christ and no longer persecuting the church like his time past religious practice used to be. Now, Pastor Tolliver, that was, that was just my direct, commentary on it and I can read and I can tell you exactly what I'm coming out. I was gonna come out of here tonight and I was gonna come out I got some more books maybe I'm gonna come out of here maybe out of this one too and I got a couple more that maybe I'm gonna come out of um but but I could do I will do my main reading out of here out of here main read out of here okay so so i hope that that i know that was quick to the point um so let's come back next week let's come back next week and let me let's and maybe i'm missing it maybe i'm wrong i could be wrong oh my, 
My bad. That's this one right here. That's that one right there. Let me see. Hold on. I think I won't come out of it. Let me see. I'm going to come out of it. Let me see. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to come out of here. I was going to come out of here, too. Okay. So, so next week, let's come back next week. And like I said, maybe I could be wrong. And I, and I, I had a couple more swords that, that, I, that I might have touched on, but I'm going to definitely come out of that anti right one first and maybe the other one. And maybe some other ones we had time. Um, it would have been the night if we had had time. Um but let's maybe let's we let's um let's come back next week and let's midrash on um Galatians chapter one verse 13 14. Maybe I could be wrong, I could have missed it. Um in my understanding of what's going on with Paul and his religious practice before Christ. Um that's my conviction right now. Um and that's my understanding right now. It may change, you know, and if I'm if I'm wrong, I had a problem repenting and change my view. It's not a salvation thing. We all stay go to glory. So, uh, but for right now, uh, Pat Tyler, was, was that pretty cool for the night? Was that pretty cool for the night? And I just Pat Tyler, but I gotta, I gotta look at him because he's the one who brought this um, topic up, and I want to make sure that uh, that he's that he's that, you know selling well with him. So, so is that is that um, it, okay? Amen. Oh, praise God. All right, fam, till next time. It's been great. Love you all. Shalom. May y'all bless you. May y'all keep you. May y'all lift his conscience upon you. May he shine his face upon you and be grace unto you. May he bless you for Shalom. In the name of the Prince of Shalom, Yahshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Love y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Purim tomorrow night. Purim, Purim, Purim. I believe it's tomorrow night. So uh, be looking out for Beth for sure. I think we're going to be on Facebook, YouTube uh, for our Purim service um, tomorrow. If you want to, you can join in tomorrow for our day side Shabbat service. Shalom, uh, Mr. Ricard. Shalom. Yeah, shalom. Yeah, all right. Love y'all. Good night.